coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm your host on Teaching with Board Games. Here today to wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas. This is actually being filmed right now on December 24th, 2022. And here to take a look at Mousetrap by Hasbro. So Mousetrap has been around since the 1960s. It's a game with a lot of history and this is actually advertised as a where does it say a newer version which is easier to um, what does it say easier setup than previous versions so is that a good thing is it a bad thing well I'll talk about that in the report card right now so let's start off with the number of players for the number of players from Mousetrap it's a B it plays between two to four players which is my standard for a B so it gets a B for learning from Mousetrap I'm going to give it a C I was really sort of toying with this one like struggling with this because um, really not a lot to it I mean you're rolling you're moving you're rolling one dice you're just counting up to six um, there's opportunities there for things I mean they have the, the cheese wheel which you're making which is fractions but it's just one set of fractions uh, I guess you can do a little bit with that just the whole machine itself is like a Rube Goldberg machine which lends itself to uh, discussions around energy and different forms of energy transformations of energy things like that but again it's a lot of work to set up you're not gonna really get that through the play of the game you know I guess you could once you kind of talk it through it's, it's kind of limited in that regard um, and then the reading is very limited because a lot of the stuff is just symbols on the board and once you know that the symbols mean you just do it I mean if you have to refer to the rule book for anything then you can read the rules then there's that but overall I mean so because there is opportunities to to pull out of it I mean I give it the C but really overall there's nothing to it I mean it's it's rolling it's moving like just just counting and then just identifying symbols and just doing what you're told there's no decision making there's no strategy uh, it's just do what you're told so yeah so I'm just gonna give it the C for the potential otherwise it'd be lower for fun for mousetrap um, I'm gonna give this one a C minus I would have given the previous version of mousetrap a, a higher one but the fact that this one has this easier to set up one which means that it needs an adult to set it up before the game is even played which to me was part of the fun of doing it is you get to different parts on the game you start to add pieces to the machine you watch it growing and building it became part of the game in this one you just start with the game built so you know um, now it says I said it requires an adult to build it but I mean I think my brother and I when we were young we knew how to build it and stuff so we could we could do that but I mean we, you know it may take some some kids might not be as as competent in building as you know some other kids so it may be something that re would require an adult so it's just something that you have to be aware of and are the kids actually going to build it properly and, and the time it takes is it, uh, you know to to do it before the game just to even before you play anything just to set up the whole game just seems a bit backwards to me because before it was like I said it was part of the game so it all kind of worked together but so yeah uh, this is a lot of the fun was sort of taken out of it for me so that's why I give it the C minus for time I'm going to give the game a B it plays half an hour you know, half an hour is about as long as I'd want to play on a game like this and you know to I think um, kids probably after half an hour are going to be losing their attention span if they have to play any longer so uh, about half an hour is about a right time so I just give it the B and for cost I'm going to give the game a C minus and for cost I'm going to give the game a C uh, it ranges between anywhere between $25 to $35, depending where I've seen it, um, which to me is a lot for a game like this. I mean, yes, you've got all these components, the plastic bits and stuff like that, and you're building this whole thing. But again, it comes down to how much are you actually going to play this game? Um, there's just a lot of pieces. A lot of things can get lost. And once you lose any of the pieces, the game's ruined. And it's... Um, or broken, because they're, they're not strong plastic or anything this is just cheap plastic so how much will use will you get out of the game and I just you know when you look at the game itself like I say it's not a lot of fun it's just because you're just doing what you're told so I just think there's better games out there which are more worth your money and like when I saw it, it was like up anywhere as high as $35 I thought wow there's no way I paid $35 for this game I remember once 
a few years ago or something, but I saw it on sale at Walmart for like $5. Now for $5, I would buy this game and I would recommend it. But for 35 or even 25 I'm like, no, I, I, I wouldn't pay that much for this. That's my choice, my, um, my feelings. I mean, it's up to you what you feel, but uh, if you see it in a, but even if you see it in a thrift store, like I said, there's just so many chances that the piece are gonna be missing. So it would just be a caveat emptor, you know, buyer beware because you don't know what you're getting. Anyway, so yeah, that's kind of it for the report card. Let me take it to the table and I'll show you how this game is played. So this is the setup for the mousetrap game. I've set up the board now and I have to say it seems a lot harder than I remember it. Like my brother and I used to play this game a fair bit when we were younger and it was, this was hard to set up. It was not easy just trying to fit these things into the slots and what went where and get the pieces to fit properly, etc. Um, tricky, tricky, and um, it also seemed to have a lot more malfunctions during the test runs of the trap than I recall happening before, but uh, is what it is. So, as I say, you know, players are going to roll a dice. So if this is the green player. The green player is moving three. So they go one, two, three. They're on a, just a plain purple space, so that's nothing. The other player goes, they go three, so they're up there. The first player to make it past the start space will get two bonus cheese to their wheel. The first per player to get eight cheese on their wheel is the winner. So the white player goes, so uh, steal. So they can steal a piece of cheese from somebody. Now in a two-player game, it's gonna be very take that. You're always stealing and hurting the other person. So it might be, I would recommend this game with three or four, not as a two-player game. Yeah, so green is you're stealing one cheese wedge from any player and add it to your own stack. All right, and then the other player goes three, one, two, three, to that space, and so on. So the, the red ones here is you just lose a piece of cheese. The blue one is you're going to launch the trap, but before you launch the trap, you can put another player under the thing and then you steal a piece of cheese from them. Uh, those ones you just gain a cheese. So, and that's pretty much it, right? So you've got your, your cheesy zone of doom here. We're gonna get caught if you're there. You have your, you steal cheese from somebody else, you gain a cheese and you just lose a cheese and you launch the trap. That's, that's pretty much it. Right, so those are the only spaces and that's all that there is to it. Uh, and the first person to make it to eight cheese wins. So the trap, um, yeah, it's neat. It's, um, I think it was ahead of its time for what it was doing, but uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's a little, I don't know, maybe I'm just being fussy, but it just seems harder to me to put together than I remember. But here's what it looks like when it goes. Hopefully it goes. Okay, so the ball goes down through the bucket lifts yep yep oh oh oh, oh. to give it a bit of a and set to hold it down well i'll tell you if a mouse gets caught by that they deserve to be caught because that was really slow coming down now one thing i don't recall being so hard was getting this thing back up again it's just like uh, it's, 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 it's stuck there. You have to go up one tooth at a time, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Really onerous. So, like I said, you know, you're playing this until somebody gets eight pieces. If they get trapped under the thing, it's like you, you, you launch the trap on them and you get to steal a piece from them. But once you've launched the trap a few times, then, hmm, yeah, it just, to me, doesn't seem like it's gonna be that interesting anymore. I think part of the fun my brother and I had was just watching it being built and once it was built and it was that sense of danger like oh no this thing can go off any time now now you just start off with the thing there and it's just like I think I think a lot of the fun is removed from it so maybe look up see if you can find the old rules for it and maybe add some stickers to the board to um, change change it a bit because it was before it was like based on the number of players you would um, you know uh, add pieces to the trap so the more players the more likely you were you know a piece of the trap so anyway it, it's uh yeah it's a shame because like i said the game's a classic and it has a lot of uh, fond memories for me but in looking at this maybe i'm just old and jaded now but <laughs> I'm, I'm just experienced i i know of better games and more fun games and it's just it's a shame because like, i think that this one when, with their new version, I think they went backwards. I think they really hurt themselves by saying, start off with the trap built because it's just, it's not as fun. I mean, part of the fun was building it and then that anticipation of once it's built, now it's dangerous. Now it's now it's uh, it's been ready to go. But this was, yeah, 
And I mean, I don't know, like, I, I don't know, trusting my kids to try and build this, it would just be, no, no. Anyway, that is it. That is basically how you play Mousetrap. So that is it for Mousetrap. Um, so the, the, the applications for this in a classroom setting or any kind of educational setting, whether you're doing homeschooling, for example, I think are limited. I mean, you, if you're at a homeschooling session, then I guess it, you could sort of play it and talk about it and you know use it as a launching point to, to, for discussions around energy and Rube Goldberg and a whole investigation around that. But in a classroom setting where you're dealing with large numbers of students, you're only playing four people at a time at this. It's too long to be playing... Well, actually, I guess it's not half an hour. I mean, you could be playing it in the center, but then again, what are they getting out of it, right? There's not a lot of educational, viable educational material in here that you can work with. So I just think it's very, very limited in that regard. And so I don't recommend this. I mean, if you have a game, a copy of this game and you want to use it, I, I would just suggest it maybe like an indoor recess game, something that the kids can play with. And, you know, after, if it's anything like my class, after a, period or two they'll have lost some of the pieces and the game will just be ruined at that point and i guess you can use the pieces for other creative purposes but say la vie right move on so not really strongly recommending this game um i i'd, I'd have to sort of put my mind more to it to think about what would be a, a good substitute for the game like you know like i can name several off the top of my head for uh like scrabble or you know so i would i would need to think about that you know what game would be like this but more more interesting more just more worthy of being in a classroom than this one so let me think about that when i can get back on that but like i said overall this one is just a for me so that is going to wrap it up for mousetrap if you um enjoyed this one please remember to hit like and subscribe down below it does help the channel and i do appreciate it and um if you have any ideas for games you might like to see on the channel, uh, content you might like me to cover, whether it's just discussions around things, interviews, books, anything like that, please let me know in the comment section below. Love to hear from the viewers as it helps me give you relevant content. And that's gonna wrap it up for today. Until next time, I am Craig Thompson Wood, your host on Teaching with Board Games, saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school with